The poorest way to face life is to face it with a sneer. There are many men who feel a kind of twisted pride in cynicism. There are many who confine themselves to criticism of the way others do what they themselves dare not even attempt. There is no more unhealthy being, no man less worthy of respect, than he who either really holds or feigns to hold an attitude of sneering disbelief toward all that is great and lofty, whether an achievement or in that noble effort which, even if it fails, comes to second achievement. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who was actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. I am Dr. Peter Howard, the president and the founder of the Fulton Sheen Institute. And uh, it's uh, my honor to welcome once again, uh, with an interview more of a style here, uh, Bill Schneiders, who is the co-founder of The Man School, also known as Great, Man, uh, Great Man's Journey. And he's also the creator of the Great Man's Legacy Masterclass that we have introduced at the Fulton Sheen Institute. Um, it's, uh, it's been a real joy collaborating with Bill uh, in order to bring this in. It's something that we've been very excited about for a while. And um, so what I want to do is, uh, because I, I really want to respect your time, is I want to basically kind of jump in. And you can go to the Fulton Sheen Institute website and you can see a great introduction by Bill on a lot of his story. Um, it's almost like a sample class. But what I wanted to do with, with this particular webinar is to focus on your questions and giving you answers, kind of the nuts and bolts of what this masterclass is about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to welcome Bill here, who is joining us from the great state of Montana, and uh, he's on screen with us right now. And so, Bill, uh, thanks for, for, for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Peter. It's an honor to be here. Great. Well, you know, Bill, I really want to just kind of dive right in and, um, you know, basically see uh, and kind of give you the floor as much as I can on those questions that really pertain to you as the creator. You have a lot of insight. Um, but uh, for those who um, aren't really familiar, help them to know just the nuts and the bolts of what is the Great Man's Legacy Masterclass. Well, the Great Man's Legacy Masterclass is a best of breed personal development program that uh, we put together to basically give you, you know, give the life wisdom that we learned in our lifetime and that we elicited from others, uh, both myself and the co-founders were tremendous students of personal development. Mm -hmm. uh, most of my career was in corporate sales in Silicon Valley. Um, and, you know, I've, I've traveled to 50 different countries, uh, over 50 different countries. I just had a lot of life experience. And I remember thinking some of the things that I had to learn the hard way, I remember thinking, gosh, I wish somebody could have taught me that 
when I was in my 20s or, or better yet, when I was in school still. Mm -hmm. And so what we hope to do with this class is, number one, provide a pathway with the best of breed wisdom from some of the brightest, smartest people that have ever lived that we've studied deeply for decades and elicited their best material, basically taking the fruit of all of what, you know, the best of what they've learned, put it in this class and then organized it in a systematic fashion. Because the syntax in which you go through it, the order and sequence in which you go through it also makes a big difference mm -hmm. um, in terms of how easily you assimilate it and so forth. So we tried to really – we're trying from in this course to save people decades of trial and error learning and um, by basically learning from those that have already gone before us that have been successful. And, of course, we're really excited about partnering with the Fulton Sheen Institute because you also bring a spiritual side to it. Um, our course is primarily a personal development, human formation course, although the founders are all devout spiritual people, including myself. But um, we decided to kind of uh, focus it you know, on the masses to kind of reach everybody. And sometimes, unfortunately, if you come across as a Christian program or a Catholic program, there are people that sort of have preconceived notions of that or perhaps they've had a bad experience and that, you know, I always say don't leave Jesus because of Judas. But I understand at the same time. <laughs> People have had some difficult, uh, sometimes have the, the wrong perception or something. And um, so we thought we'd cast a wide net. And, of course, the other part of that was there's so many great ministries out there, including your own, that are doing phenomenal work in terms of evangelizing the faith. So we just thought our lane would be best served with all of our business and corporate experience into really espousing this best of breed personal development wisdom from some of the, the greatest minds that have ever lived that we have painstakingly studied and uh, applied their principles in our life and really elicited the very best of their material and put it in this format, in this curriculum. So there's certain there's certainly a, a Catholic Christianity infused in it, uh, uh, no doubt. I think any Catholic would probably recognize that. But at the same time, somebody who's in a different place along the journey and searching, I think, would also feel very comfortable because we are talking about primarily human formation mm -hmm. and um, the, the mental, emotional, the physical, the financial um, you know, professional, your career, um, organization, efficiency, all these different aspects that kind of make up the arena of life, all the different categories within that arena of life. So that's really what I think makes it interesting. I've had actually right now, the majority of the guys going through the course right now are, are men of faith, but there's a few that are different places along the journey. And they said, you know, this has been phenomenal. It's actually led me closer to my faith because as I explore some of these truths, I start to see the symbiosis, the harmony uh, between um, natural wisdom, human wisdom, and then what I'm hearing you guys espouse from the Bible and the teachings of the church, there's truth is truth, right? And so sometimes seeking the good, the true, and the beautiful in personal professional development leads you to the ultimate good, the ultimate truth, the ultimate beauty, which is God. So um, while we're not overtly a, um, a, a, a Christian ministry of any type, we are um, very much that is infused throughout. And um, we're, we just picked a bit different lane to drive in so we can reach the most people and cast a, cast a broad net. Well, yeah, that's, that's great. And that was always a question that I had, too, because the, this element of personal development uh, can have a lot of nuances for people. <clears throat> and it's, I think in, in many respects, it, it can be misunderstood. And so I want to revisit that whole question of, because as a Fulton Sheen Institute, it's, it's, we are you know, a Catholic institute. But we are um, concerned about the formation of the total person. And so I want to revisit that question in a little bit. Um, but as far as, okay, the class itself, what is the structure? How long is it? Um, you know, what, what can people expect uh, who, who want to learn more about that? Yeah, great question. So it is a six-month master class broken up into 22 formal lessons. Then we have several bonus lessons. So it's basically we've broken up in a way so that somebody who's currently a family guy, busy, you know, job with perhaps a wife and kids at home could basically take this in bite sized chunks. So it's you're able to assimilate it. It's manageable. I've been in my life to weekend seminars. I've been to week long seminars, corporate trainings. And what I found is that uh, they were wonderful. There was a lot of good things about it. In fact, some of those things that I learned have worked their way into this course. But what I found out about the format is there's a lot, there's a temporary kind of raw, raw and pick me up. But a lot of studies show that unless you practice something diligently for anywhere from 30 to 60 days, some studies, you know, say closer to 30 days, some say more like 60 days. But if you don't practice it consistently over time, there's a chance that it can begin to fade. In fact, this is even true with the speaker notes. 
if you take, uh, if you just listen to what the speaker says, uh, I forget the exact, you know, don't quote me on the exact uh, percentages, but it's like you retain about 20% within 24 hours and it's like 10% within 72 hours. And it, it's sort of, it's not the, it's not the trend line that we want to see We're, versus if you do something over time and you're reinforcing the principles over and over and over, like over a six month period, it tends to get more deeply ingrained in our subconscious mind. Those men mental systems, the, the neurons, the synapses of our brain our heart become hardwired with what we're learning and with these habits that we're cultivating and training on, especially with the homework. And we tend to assimilate it more and begin to live it in our life versus just a temporary pick me up, rah, rah, which is a great start. I don't, I don't uh, disparage that in any way, but we felt that this was a much better format. And by doing it over six months also, you can do this course. It, it's about two hours a week, roughly. I mean, some, some weeks are a little less, some weeks are a little more, but it's about an hour of video and maybe an hour of homework. Um, some homeworks are maybe 20, 30 minutes of homework. Um, and, and some weeks the video might be a little longer, or if it's a longer one, I might break it up into two 40 minute videos instead of one hour and a half video or something. But we try to do it in very manageable bite sized chunks that is, um, you're able to assimilate. And then over that six month period over time, and then also meeting with a mastermind group, like the one that you're going to be hosting, mm -hmm. um, you get a chance to unpack the material with a strategist like yourself um, and, and then basically with other guys in the group. And we find that that creates kind of a mastermind group and a mastermind group in that group. When you work these other guys that are in sympathy and harmony with what you're trying to accomplish, everyone's trying to improve their life and be the best they can be and make the most out of the God given talents that they've been given. Right. I love the story of the talents in the Bible. Um, it's, there's a lot, there's so much wisdom in the Bible, but that story in particular, um, you know, Jesus and Mon Jesus basically praised the one who made use of his talents. Mm -hmm. Well done, good and faithful servant. And the one who just buried his talent in the ground did nothing with it. If I recall correctly, it's wicked and slothful servant. It's pretty strong words. So we want to be the guy that cultivates and develops that talent for good, for contribution. And so that's really what we're focused on. And by doing it in bite-sized chunks over a six-month period, it's manageable. It's, uh, it doesn't interfere with the rest of your life in, in too extreme a way. And you ingrain those habits over six months. And then with the mastermind group, being with other like-minded guys, what we found, Peter, is you tend to get ideas as a result of that association with mm -hmm. the other guys that are in sympathy and harmony with your purpose as well, just as you are with theirs. And there's a there's a almost like a third mind, like a mastermind, that's where the term comes from, that's created. Uh, and you get great ideas as a result of that association that you might not have otherwise gotten on your own. Very akin to like when you and I have had conversations, um, you know, you said things that have triggered things in my thinking and made me think of things that I, I wouldn't have thought of on my own. And and perhaps I had that effect on you. So that's really the beauty of it. It's uh, it's walking, it's having that accompaniment with other guys that are on the same journey and having that kinship and then also having lessons that really reinforce the material and ingrain those habits, those life changing habits over a six month period. Yeah, that's what really attracted me too was the was the element that you have really three parts to the to the structure. It's the 22 weeks, you know, long and and then of course you have the lessons and then you have a live mastermind which is a huge dynamic because there's also a level of accountability as well as well as building up fraternity with other men who are seeking the same thing. And then you right. of course you have the homework too because if you don't apply it 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 doesn't sink in. And so yeah. You know, and, and that's also kind of like when it comes to the, the ways that you can take this course, you could take it as it is as a self-study. You could also uh, take it with a group mastermind, and that group can be on the smaller end, could be seven people, could have 30, could have more. Depends on the on the, the guide or the strategist, as we call it. Um, right. Or you could even do a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you know, private strategy session going through it. Imagine six months with just a one-on-one -on -one where you're coached, you're mentored. And you really narrow in on those uh, those specific things that stand out that you don't get in the dynamic of a mastermind. So I think that those things really attracted me. But just the fact that the course itself stands on its own was was um, I think what what caught my my attention, you know, uh, initially as far as like this this is something solid. I've never really seen anything like it. So that being said, hey. you mentioned personal development, and I said to you, you know that can be a nuanced term. I've had the question, what are the sources that are being drawn from? Because we've already heard you kind of allude to 
like some science, we've heard some psychology, we've heard some other thing. Like, what are those sources that you're drawing from? Yeah, no, great question. So it's really the best, um, the best personal development. Uh, well, let me get, let me backtrack for a second. And answer that question. Where it really started is when I got out of college. I got a job with a great telecommunications company that was an international company. Um, right out of college, working in Los Angeles, and I was living in Pasadena, and I was literally in Pasadena, California, which is about a 20, 25 minute commute to my office. And being a young guy out of college with no money and um, a lack of experience, my parents uh, graciously allowed me to live at home for a time until I could save up to get my own place. Mm -hmm. And so I was really enjoying this, you know, this manageable commute and uh, being able to go home and have a hot meal that mom cooked and use the laundry machine on the weekends, and and it was really great. And then about six months in, I found out we were moving our office from downtown Los Angeles, Pacific Mutual Building, um, to basically the west side of L.A. near Santa Monica. And so my commute was going to be, you know, go from like 25 minutes to about an hour and a half with traffic. Mm. Uh, maybe some days a little less, but it basically was just I thought, oh, my. And that's each way. And I thought to myself, <laughs> I'm going to be spending about three hours a day in the car. This is a nightmare. And so I, after the first day, I just said, and I, the thing is, I could have moved to the west side of town, but, you know, places were really expensive over there. I really want to live at home for a year and save money, be able to, you know, save up for a down payment for a house. So I just decided to make the commute. And what ended up happening after the first day of just sitting in, you know, mind numbing bumper to bumper traffic in Los Angeles, uh, which I'm sure people live in any big city in the, in the world can probably relate to. I said, you know what, I can't waste three hours a day in the car just sitting around breathing, you know, exhaust from the car in front of me. I got to do something productive with this time. And so I went to a bookstore and I started, because I was in sales, I started to buy books in, on sales. Because my dad was a, a capital management guy, I started to buy books on investing and finance. I started to buy books on marketing and real estate and buying rental properties and developing streams of passive income. And then I got into psych, uh, more like psychological stuff. What makes people tick? Why is it that some people have the same experience, but they have a totally different result of that experience? And that was actually triggered from a video I'd seen in one of my corporate trainings where there were two brothers that were like either twins or like a year apart. I can't remember exact story, but they were separated at birth somehow. And one of them ended up being like in prison, you know, uh, mm -hmm. incredible recidivism back in the you know prison system. And the other one became super successful, you know in business and finances, personal life, spiritually. And when they asked both people, how did you end up this way at both guys, both men had the exact same answer with an upbringing like I had, how could, you know, how could anything, how could you get any other results? Hmm. But the guy that ended up in prison said, things were so bad. It was so rough. You know, I had to fight street. The other guy said, things were so bad. I made a decision that I don't care what it takes. I'm changing this. And so the same, you know, the same circumstances, but totally radically different results. And so then I started to study psychology. I study, you know, people like some of the best personal development authors like Earl Nightingale and Jim Rohn and, and um, a lot of the sales guys like Zig Ziglar and Brian Hopkins, Brian Tracy and Tom Hopkins. And, you know, just so much wisdom. A lot of books that my dad, who had also been a, a student mm -hmm. of always trying to improve himself. Um, and it just filtered into every area of my life. Even books that I read from my you know, sports career playing ball in college had to do with the psychology that winning athletes have and how that same sort of psychology transfers into the professional workplace. And so in a short period of time, you can imagine, Peter, three hours a day, a minimum of five days a week. And I'm just, I'm just, I, you know, you have somebody like, uh, you know, I'll pick somebody like a Warren Buffett. Okay. Who I don't agree mm -hmm. with on everything, particularly some of his, you know, spiritual principles, but as an investor, he's brilliant. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, as we say, take the gold, leave the dirt. So I don't subscribe to all his philosophies, but I do subscribe. He's a phenomenal investor. And here's a guy that has been investing his whole life. He's in his 90s now. He's probably in his 60s back then when I was, you know, first started listening to him. But he had about 40, you know, 45, 50 years of investing experience. And he wrote a book with the best of what he's learned in 50 years that I can read in like six or eight hours or maybe listen to on a book on tape because it was still cassette tapes in those days. To, I'm yeah. dating myself here. But literally, I started to gain this profound knowledge. And I was here, I'm a kid of like 23, 24 years old, and I'm gaining the wisdom of guys that are 60s, 70s, 80s, that have a lifetime of wisdom, assimilating all this material in business, finance, personal development, professionalism in the corporate space. I had one of my sales managers in particular was really good at, he just had a lot of street smarts. 
He was a very uh, good salesperson, very honest and very ethical. And he had a lot of street smarts, and which even things like how you dress, how you show up, you know, what's the right attire to wear for a certain meeting you're going to, um, teaching me how to listen because I tend to talk a lot, being able to listen to the mm-hmm. customer. All these things that we all just, they're just skills that we need to learn. But, but I got such a heaping dose of it at a young age and I marinated in it for years that I started to assimilate that and, and you know, do it in my life. And I started to see the incredible results from it. And then I thought, my gosh, why didn't I learn this in college? Why did I learn high school? Mm-hmm. These are the real life skills that are really important. I mean, I learned, I had a wonderful education. I was very blessed. But a lot of what I learned, to be quite frank, doesn't translate in my professional life. I'll never use it again. I'm thinking some of the advanced math I had that has no bearing on my life now whatsoever. And I suffered through those class, like statistics and so forth. But, um, but for some people, you know, maybe if you're a, you know, a financial wizard or you're an engineer or some, a scientist, you might use that math. But I always thought, gosh, it'd be great if education could have been more tailored to things that really matter for what we want to do. And that was another uh, point that I had was that, you know, in my whole career, my whole education, nobody ever asked me, hey, Bill, what do you love to do? What, what makes your heart sing? What, what, is, what is the thing that you do the best with the least amount of effort that just comes natural for you? What's the God-given gift or mission that you feel like you've been given? And nobody ever asked those questions. It was more just like, okay, sit down in my class, shut up, pay attention. And if mm-hmm. you memorize enough of what I you know, spit at you, then you can pass my class and then you can go to the next class. And then eventually you just, you know, you graduate from college and you send out as many resumes as you can. This is what people did. There was no intentionality, no very little foresight or design, unless you know somebody knew they wanted to be a doctor or a lawyer or something very specific. But I would say for 60, 70 percent of the people out there, it was a vague generality versus a meaningful specific. And so then you apply to all these companies, whichever one hires you first, you go to work for them, mm-hmm. you know, and then you just you know you work for them for 40, 50 years, and then you retire with a pension, and then you die a few years later. And I mean, right. that was literally I'm over dramatizing it slightly, but there is there was a lack of intentionality. And I thought, gosh, if we really spend a little bit of time uh, on the front end, we can really craft the life that is like magnificent, that juices us, that we love, that we, we can be engaged in work that is meaningful for us, that is joyous. I mean, have you ever seen somebody like, who's so good at what they do, they're so passionate. Maybe it's like a Steve, jo- a Steve Jobs as an adventurer working, working with uh, technology or like a phenomenal musician who just gets so absorbed in their craft or like a, you know, somebody like a, a, you know, an athlete, like a Michael Jordan, who's just, or Larry Bird, who just didn't even have the talent of a Michael Jordan per se, athleticism wise, but just honed every element of the game of basketball, honed his skills. He just loved it. He ate, slept and drank it. And I thought, what a blessing if you could be engaged in work like that, that really lights your fire, Mm -hmm. but nobody asks these questions. So all of this, it's a long winter to answer your question. I know, but I'm coming back (laughs) to it. It's basically um, so I think your question was what personal development sources specifically. So some of the greatest authors of all time, some of the greatest leading business people, um, some of the greatest people in finance, in sales, in marketing, in real estate development, in theology. I mean, Fulton Sheen was one of my biggest mentors. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I'll remind you, I think you had shared with me once like a huge percent of his, of his audience was not Catholic or even Christian sometimes. And yet he was extremely well respected. You know, he used to show, he used to be invited to the Emmys in Hollywood. Right. Or the, uh, yeah, the Emmys. And in fact, he won an Emmy. And it was funny because he thanked his writer. You know, everyone's saying, I want to thank my producer, my writer, my publicist. He's like, I want to thank my writers, Matthew, Mark, <laughs> Luke, and John. Right. <laughs> and uh, so he, he really would uh, meet people where they're at. And then he, he would actually give them a lesson, really coming from the treasures of the church with Catholic theology and, mm-hmm. and apologetics and sometimes even mysticism, but in a way where the, the, he was explaining in such a beautiful way that people could relate to him. Mm-hmm. My grandmother, who was Episcopalian, loved Fulton Sheen. She could, I mean, she would watch him all the time, and at the end of her life, she actually converted to Catholicism because of his example, or in yeah. large part because of his example. So it's it's some of the best, uh, best of breed sources out there. A lot of the people I met along the way who were super successful – and, and, and also have the spiritual life. They had the great family. They weren't just only focused on one thing, you know, one of those categories within the arena. I knew mm-hmm. a lot of people in my Silicon Valley days, they, they were really good focusing on the money part, but the family, the life, the health, a lot of those things were not as well uh, in balance. Um, so 
I really want, I really thought having that whole balance, that whole balance wheel. So it's really a, a best of breed collection of the best wisdom that myself and the other co-founder that we've learned over the years from some of the wisest people that have ever lived and extrapolating the very best of that wisdom. Like I said, picking the fruit, you know, we studied all the roots. So we're just picking the fruit and you can study the roots later if you want, mm -hmm. but we're picking the very best fruit and then organizing it into a systematic fashion uh, over six months and in the right order and sequence, starting with dreaming, right? Because so much of it, we've forgotten how to dream and, and working on the mind first, because so many things that manifest in our external world start with the internal world. So even the way it's laid out, the order and sequence or the syntax of it is really important. So mm -hmm. um, hopefully that answers your question. Um, uh, so, yeah, you, you, I think you answered a bunch of questions in there because there's also that whole question of, okay, you have these passions, you have these experiences. So why this class? Why right now? I think you've answered that, you know, pretty well. Um, you know, and, and th there's that whole question too, that of the terminology, you hear personal development, you also hear human formation. And, um, you know, I've gone through the, the master class and, so many surprises that I had. I mean, just from what you're talking about, I was that really caught my attention. You know, there are, there are so many things and principles, things that are, that help us as men to be able to succeed in all the aspects of our life. But right. success is, can be a very ambiguous word. You could be successful, but for the wrong things. You mentioned intentionality. Intentionality is huge. You mentioned rewiring. We have we have to be rewired. You know, my theologian side is about to jump in here because it's like. You know all these effects of original sin, but one of the one of the biggest ones that we don't deal with, especially in the Catholic world, is this human formation, and that human formation is that psychological development that we have that comes from our experiences of the world and things that affect us, and that cause all the disorders and dysfunctions um, that are that are in the world. But as Fulton Sheen always says, there isn't anything that happens in the world. Look at all the evils. That doesn't first start within man. And we've got to rewire that. Yeah. Just one comment I wanted from you because this ties into that same question um, of just kind of where you're drawing from and having gone through the course. You draw even from like physiology and those kinds of things. Like there's a there's actually a connection between what haps, happens in our bodies and our brains, our physical brains, that is affected like in a psychosomatic way by those things that influence us. And that's a big part, at least for me especially, and why I really like it for other people, is because it deals with that reality of we have to address those things because, you know, as, as we learn, 95% that, uh, that drives our actions are subconscious. When I heard that, I was like, oh my goodness, that like explains a lot. And nobody wants to go and deal with those kinds of things. You know, and I was like, it, it, it was kind of mind blowing for me, but maybe you could just comment a, a little bit about that because sometimes people who are just kind of, you know, they're, they're, they're science fanatics and like this draws of that important connection. Yeah, no, it's a good point you bring up. We have several lessons that kind of talk about the brain and how our brain works, but roughly you know, five to 10% of our brain is a conscious mind and roughly 90 to 95% is a subconscious mind. But when people are trying to change certain habits or behaviors, they're trying oftentimes from just their conscious mind, but they haven't rewired their subconscious. So you could have something in there that's been, re that's been wired for a long time and it becomes very difficult to break that habit unless you consciously go in and rewire it. I mean, I'll give you a brief example, a very simple example. When I was a little kid, I remember in the 70s, my dad took me to the Dallas Cowboys training camp, and Roger Staubach was their quarterback. And I grew up in Southern California, and, of course, the Dallas Cowboys were in Texas. But they used to have their training camp in Thousand Oaks. So one day mm -hmm. my dad took me there because Roger Staubach, the legendary Hall of Fame quarterback, was one of my favorite quarterbacks. Also a devout Catholic man, I understand, interestingly enough, for our conversation here. But um, I remember, because I love Roger Staubach, he, did, he, was, he was paid to be a pitchman for um, Rolaids. You know, it's like an antacid tablet, mm -hmm. like Tums or – I think they're still around. But I remember from the 70s, there was a commercial. And he'd say, how do you spell relief? R-O-L-A-I-D-S, roll it. Mm -hmm. I still remember that from you know <laughs> decades ago because I'd see that commercial and I'd associate it with Roger Staubach, my favorite quarterback, one of my favorite football players. And so things get wired. I remember I had a coach once. I was blessed to have some really wonderful coaches growing up, some wonderful teachers, great mentors of all kinds. But one of my coaches – probably not meaning to, probably just trying to motivate me, but he was a little harsh at times. 
And I remember that got wired in. I got a little, and I, there was a little performance anxiety, specifically this was like a little league baseball. And, um, my dad couldn't quite figure it out. you know, like, you know, and he, I remember, anyway, I solved the problem. My dad basically rewired my thinking and we went to the batting cage. He built up my confidence and, and, uh, and, you know, ended up being great from there. But that was my first lesson in, in really rewiring and how somebody could actually in your environment, oftentimes our family members, people can be overly sarcastic or let's say, Oh, you can't do that. Or you're not mm-hmm. good enough to do that. Oh, sure. You'll never do that. You know, those kinds of things. And sometimes those can get rewired. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, even like name calling or bullying at a school, you're a wimp, you're a, you're stupid, you're whatever, you know, tall, short, fat, skinny, you know, pick your adjective. And, and those kinds of things can get wired. And sometimes they can be deep seated wounds. Some kids more naturally dismiss them. Some kids really internalize them. And there's a lot of different personalities out there and people react to the same stimuli or, or, or experiences in different ways. But I found that you got to rewire that subconscious mind first to make sure everything is in harmony and you're you're going the same direction intentionally otherwise you experience this like inner civil war unless mm. you get that right so right. a big part of the first several lessons in the class is really getting the mind right because everything first begins in the mind everything you see around you if you look in your room right now the beautiful wood paneling behind you that microphone you're speaking into that beautiful sport coat it all began as a thought an idea in somebody's mind and then it manifested in reality through their thought but it all begins in the thoughts Mm-hmm. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, the carpenter from the plains of Galilee mm-hmm. once said. So I think it's very powerful. We have to start there, and that's where a lot of people get messed up. A lot of it is just a battle for the mind, mm-hmm. because when the mind is right, if your inner world is right, your outer world tends to reflect that. And this is true. I mean, you know, being in the course, the last lesson I did, lesson twenty, was about creating an ideal workspace, and uh, it was about organization and, and creating, crafting a beautiful workspace that really um, creates the environment where you thrive and where, you know, it's organized, you know where things are. And so I was doing some, I was doing some retiding this weekend myself. And I noticed that there were certain things that I had to rewire. One of the great things about teaching this class is I also get to reaffirm these things in, in my mind and, and I get, and I it really reinforces me to live it because I'm, I'm marinating in the material so often. So we have to be so conscious when our desk is a mess, you know, or our, our living environment or clothes are strewn all over the floor. Everything's in a, It might be that our inner world is a little confused and messy at the time. At least I've noticed that's true for my mm-hmm. life and a lot of people that I've had the privilege to, you know, coach and mentor and work with. And at the same time, when your mental world is correct and it's straight, it's peaceful, it's smooth, it's balanced, then your outer world tends to reflect that with order and peace. So it really, everything begins with the mind. So we start there. We start with rewiring mm-hmm. the, the subconscious mind. And it's very much akin to anything, you know, if um, if you take, like, for example, a record, remember those old record players, you know, like when you and I were kids, they were, before CDs came along or MP3, we had actual physical LPs. It's like there's a hardwired pattern in that record. And that's why it plays a certain song or a certain recording a certain way. But if I take a razor blade and I scratch those things, it'll never play the same way again. It'll skip, it'll loop. And so that's a rough analogy of what we're doing. We're actually making sure that if there is some faulty wiring there, if we picked up some negative thinking along the way or some negative habits or negative traits, um, first of all, I mean, the sacraments of the church are beautiful for this, for getting our spirit and mind in harmony. But then we could actually, we might still have a proclivity for a weakness in a certain area. And by hardwiring the opposite of that, the behavior that we want to actually uh, enact, then, then we, can actually, we can actually take the time to do that through auto-suggested, repeated affirmation, you know? And so, I mean, there was a, there's a scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, I think it's Philippians 4.13, if I'm not mistaken, off the top mm-hmm. of my head. And I know a lot of athletes that had some performance anxiety that would repeat that over and over and over. I know a Christian pastor, minister friend of mine, he's not Catholic, he's a uh, Christian evangelical, and he's actually counseled people in his, in his church to use that verse because it's marinating your mind in Christ. It's basically focusing on Christ. And so anything positive can be rewired in our mind intentionally, just like anything negative. And advertisers know this, believe me. Mm-hmm. They'll wire you. You hear these sure. commercials, certain songs that have lyrics that are less than uh, ideal, we might say, to, be, to put it nicely. And we have to be so careful of what we let into our mind. We have to be so careful to guard it, particularly as a parent with our children. 
with mass media, with what they're listening to, with if they're on their cell phone. And we want to make sure we're putting good stuff in our mind and, and putting a big firewall to keep the bad stuff out. So that's a big yep. part of the rewiring process. And once we do that in our subconscious mind, we find the, the behavior that we're trying to that we're trying to adopt that has maybe been difficult up to that point. When the subconscious mind gets it, uh, it's much easier to follow. And if only your conscious mind gets it, and and mm -hmm. those those positive changes tend to last and stick. Well, this is certainly a fire hose with uh, coming at us here uh, in, in this Q and A here. Um, I'm going to move on to another question that I received that was more specific about the Fulton Machine Institute because um, that is, you know, there's there's that question: what is the relationship here? Because uh, I am a, a man school strategist as well, uh, so that I can actually lead the the masterminds, or I can also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And so the question was: what is the Fulton Machine Institute, and in particular, Dr. Howard Me, um, as a man school strategist, bring to the experience? And this is why I got so excited because I just Fulton Sheen Institute. This is all how Fulton Sheen would work. I'm a Catholic theologian. I have a doctorate in sacred theology, um, and I've also been a professor in many capacities of you know different courses. And one in particular always struck me was spiritual theology. the 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 premise of that is you have to have first an adequate anthropology before you start getting into the spirit, because everything right. is related. And that's why this human formation of the psychological influences um, you know, th that are part of it, all of those things on a natural level, they serve as the foundation upon which everything else builds. And then grace, as we, as we learn in theology, St. Thomas, um, grace, grace perfects nature. So, um, you know, Add to that the fact that I am uh, my passion and you know expertise is in Fulton Sheen, who had some of the greatest um, insights into the human person and Christ, uh, Christian philosophy of life, um, and all of these things. I'm excited to be able to share because they're going to help. Because a lot of people will complain, um, you know, their spiritual problems, and it's like the demonic and this demonic. Well, the demonic is loose today. I don't have to prove that to anybody. However, I remember there was an exorcist. And uh, Father Forteo, he's from Spain, and he said something along the lines that it was like 70% of the problems that we have of our, our, just from our own doing, our own behaviors of things. They're not just, oh, the devil's causing all of these things. It's, no, you have to, you have a lot to work on. And when you, once you start doing that, once you start going deeper and actually dealing with these things, getting your mind right, getting the you know, new habits into your life, getting a lot of the things that we have the power to do with our natural faculties, then we open ourselves and we free ourselves up for the Holy Spirit to be able to work with us. So this goes across the board. So that was a, another part that really excited me and something that I um, am looking forward uh, to bringing into the masterminds, even for one-on-ones, especially with one-on-ones. Um, I really like to, to, you know, to dive into those things because it's a focus on that person. Um, but this is, you know, Fulton Sheen's a man who inspired millions around the world. And, and he, his, his predominant audience was actually 60% non-Catholic at his prime. When he was, you know, on the television, you know, John Paul II practices English from him. But he, I mean, even communists were attracted to him because he spoke yeah. truth about the human person and he, he went to the heart of the human condition. But he never left it there. He wanted to repair that so that then he could then give the higher wisdoms because there is a level of wisdoms. But we have to be really careful not to, to divorce these things rather than see that they are intimately linked and you can't build, you know, you can't, you, you can't have a building that starts in the, in the clouds, in the sky. It's got to be rooted in the ground. And so yeah. that's what I have found that this course um, has brought to me. And I know it's going to bring to a lot of men because, as you mentioned, it's all the arenas of life that this applies to. You may be really strong in, you know, half of them or maybe 80%, but that 20% may be the one thing that's actually pulling – the, you know, the greater part of your life down. So I'm really excited about, you know, that that's what I think the Fulton Sheen Institute and what I'm personally going to be bringing into this, um, you know, as, as a mastermind strategist and as a one-on-one -on -one coach, um, I'm really excited about that. So I hope that that answers that question, um, you know, as far as... Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I just want to echo that. I'm really excited to have you on board too because your expertise in that area, sometimes people divorce those two, like you said, but they're very harmonious. They should be in complete harmony. 
you know, the personal development, the human formation, and the spiritual formation. And of course, of the two, the spiritual formation is more important in the long run, right? Ultimately, heaven is the goal. But at the same time, you know, we're called to be salt and light of the earth. We're called to, you know, uh, evangelize the whole world. We're called, to, we're called to leaven the world. We're called to be, you know, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Catholics should be the best workers. We should be the best accountants, the best lawyers, the best business people, the best teachers, the best business, I mean, the most honest, ethical. And unfortunately, we fall short many times in many categories. But when you think about it, those two things are should be in perfect symbiotic harmony. They should not be devoid. Make Working on your human formation, right, your, your natural human skills, your professionalism, all those things, those don't subtract from your spirituality. In fact, I would argue they add to it. Exactly. They give you a broader depth. And I've had conversations with people I know who remain nameless that they mentor some seminarians. And I remember asking one of these gentlemen, um, hey, how's it going? How's the new crop of seminarians? And, and he said, you know, there's some fantastic guys, really promising they're going to make great priests. There's some really, all the guys are just very virtuous. They love the Lord. They're, they're, they're on fire. He's like, but my one worry is a lot of them just because they're so young, they don't have a lot of life experience. They're really lacking human formation. This is what he told me before I ever told him about what I was doing with the man school or anything mm-hmm. else. He said, I mean, I said, what do you mean? He said, well, some of them are just shy. Like they won't look you in the eye. They give you kind of a weak handshake. There's just a, a, a sense of a lack of confidence they're spiritual. They love the Lord. God bless them. It's a good start. It's a great foundation to start from. But they just need to mature in their skills. And he said, you know, I, some of these guys, I can't see them leading a parish with like several thousand people and with the skill set where they're at right now. So there, there's some growth that's going to take place mm-hmm. there. And, and with God's help, they'll get there. But he said he, he was telling me as a guy who mentors seminarians, even seminarians who have the spiritual part right, which again, amen, that's the most important. God bless them. But they're lacking in human formation. So many people, we, and of course in the world, there's also a total lack of human formation. And sometimes a propensity for serious sin, right? Mm-hmm. Serious life um, habits that are not constructive, that can lead you down a dark path. And so we're all broken. We're all, we're all human. We're all trying to do the best we can. But I, I, it, I get a little, uh, I kind of cringe sometimes when people try to divorce the human mm-hmm. formation from the right. spiritual formation. I think they should be in perfect symbiosis. You know, we got to breathe with both lungs. Mm-hmm. And it reminds me of an analogy that Fulton Sheen made between, you know, free enterprise capitalism that we had in the Western. Of course, he was very active preaching at the height of the Cold War. So you'd had like all of Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union at the time, now Russia, that was under this atheistic communism. And then here we have this, you know, free enterprise democracy. And yet, you know, what he used to say, it's like what we have in the West. It's like it's like Christ. We have Christ, but without the cross. He's like, what they have in the East, they have the cross without Christ. Exactly. And I always thought that was such a beautiful, as only Fulton Sheen can do, he had a beautiful way of articulating the situation and truths in a way. So what I think, yes, the spiritual is by far the most important, and that's the beauty of your formation as a doctorate in theology, an incredibly well-read, well-formed, expert in apologetics and theology and philosophy, bringing the best of the human formation. What a beautiful symbiosis that, that you can bring to this that, you know, a lot of people can't. I don't have your depth of the. I consider myself a devout Catholic practicing, and I, I know a lot, And I but I've chosen to kind of, we, we made the choice to cast a wide net and reach out to those that nece- not necessarily preach the choir, but reach out to everyone and try to bring them in. So that was a conscious decision we felt God was leading us to do, just mm-hmm. like there's different ministries. There's ministries sure. To oh, yeah, absolutely. There's ministries to drug addicts on the street. There's ministries to homeless people. There's ministries to businessmen, you know. So that was, we decided, we felt like that was discerning from God. That was our lane. Right. But I think you're in a unique position to really, you know, marry, have a beautiful marriage of that spiritual formation with the very best human formation and meld that together in a beautiful way. Just like Jesus was fully divine and a divine nature and a human nature, I think there's a beautiful symbiosis there where we can be salt and light, begin to live the life of heaven here on earth. By being an encourager, by being positive, by helping people, by setting an example, by the way we show up with every mm-hmm. encounter. You know, I don't know if you've right. ever experienced this, Peter. There's certain people that I've met in my life that just when I'm in there, they're so accomplished, they're so virtuous, they're so just polished in every way that just being in their presence just makes me happy, lifts my spirits, or I just kind of go, wow. 
that guy is just, man, he's just, there's something special about him. And, and I just, I think that's, we, we're striving to create that beautiful symbiosis between you know, the, the, the best human formation right. with the deepest spiritual formation. I think that's the uniqueness that the Fulton Sheen Institute and you specifically are going to be able to bring to this program and take it to another level. Yeah, well, I, I, that's our that's our hope and our intention. I, I listened to um, um, a man uh, who's a clinical psychologist, a Catholic clinical psychologist, Dr. Peter Malinowski, recently, and he just he spoke the same language. And what he does with this too, because he's actually worked, he's working in this field also, which he he accurately calls. He's like, this is a niche field because it's so needed, but it's not quite yet discovered the way it should be. And what he described, what he's doing, and those of us who are really in this um, this kind of a movement, he described it as like we're it's like John the Baptist. Human formation prepares the way for the Lord. We've got to remove those impediments in our natural human life. You know, all those kinds of things that are that are psychological. We we've got to get we got to remove those impediments. We got to build up and mature the the ones that we need to on once that's done. And we have to remember that Jesus, you know, what does it say in Luke 2, is it 52, I think? Um, what did he do? He grew in wisdom and favor. Stature of knowledge before exactly. God. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and favor before God and, and with man. Why? For the way he acted. 30 years he was with his family having this human formation. And it was, right. his divinity was never even known. Until the wedding feast at Cana, so it's you know we learn a lot. Even though in the silence of those thirty years, we learn the importance of family. We learn the importance of what was his upbringing like. Well, we can have an idea. Jesus is perfect God. He's true man and or true God, and he's true man. He actually, this is a heart of Catholic uh, teaching of on Christology, yeah. is he had to be perfected even though he he's God, but he had to grow in that perfection and mature in that all the stages of life. So that's why I get excited about this. We can keep going on and on about this. Um, but I, I wanted to, uh, just looking at the time here, I just wanted to kind of wrap it up here because we, I think we've covered the, the structure of the course, you know, the 22 weeks um, or six months, the three different ways you can do it in a group. You could do it one-on-one with a, with a private coach or strategist, or you could even do it as a self-study you know, obviously it kind of goes down with accountability and maximum results is the more you're with somebody guiding you, that's natural. Anybody in sports will tell you that. Um, and, and, and I think that, uh, why don't you just give us in one minute why you think men should take this master class? Putting you on the spot, I know. We're, we're all called to become the very best that we can be. We're all called to be salt and light in this world. And unfortunately, a lot of the very best professional and personal development wisdom that I learned over a long career through a lot of great books from studying those that went before me, you know, the best way to learn something uh, is through somebody else's experience. I mean, if you can avoid mistakes, you should learn from your mistakes, but it's even better to learn from somebody else's mistakes who, who's got maybe 50 more years of life experience in a certain category than you do and has written a book that you can read, again, and get 50 years of experience in eight or 10 hours, however long it takes you to read that book, and start to apply those things in your life. So I felt an obligation to, I've got a lot of nieces and nephews now in their early 20s that are graduating from school, and I feel an obligation to like, hey, let me tell you, let me try to help you get ahead faster and become the best that you can be and give you a lot of wisdom rather than just letting you fumble around like a bumper pool, you know, or, or you know, a pinball getting bounced around by life. Let's be intentional. Let's figure out what is your God-given mission? What is that unique mission that our creator has given you and how can we discover and uncover what that is, which is the first part of this course, and how do we help you get the right mindset to make that happen so that you follow through, so that you're disciplined, and so that you're, you're pulled. You don't have to push yourself and force that discipline. You're so excited by this compelling vision of your future that you're, you're naturally just pulled towards it. And how do, we, how do we share this wisdom that so many others have, have already learned so you don't have to relearn it yourself and waste time. You don't have to regrade, you know, re, re, uh, retake the same ground. You can, we can save you decades of trial and error learning. And at the same time, I always say who you are is God's gift to you. Who you become is your gift to God. And that's taking the talents mm -hmm. he's given you and molding them. So we should work like heck to try to 
become the greatest gift that we can be to others and, and serve others as best we can and make the greatest contribution in this life that we can. So one day when we meet our creator, you know, we graduate to heaven. It's well done, good and faithful servants. And it won't be like the story of the talents where the guy, you know, when he congratulated the guys that doubled their talents and the guy that hit his talent on the ground, he said, wicked and slothful servant. We don't want to be that guy. And I think mm -hmm. that parable is in there for a lesson. And so I truly mm -hmm. believe that we have almost a, almost a divine obligation to make the most of what we've been given, to cultivate our talents to the maximum in order to serve others. Not for materialism, not for vanity, not for you know any of those reasons or hedonism in the case of, I mean, I see people, I've, I've seen people go off the deep end. Mm -hmm. There's an old saying, you can fall off the boat on the port or the starboard side. And I know a guy I worked with who was really conscious of being healthy and, and he had some wonderful, great workout habits. And he and I used to train together, you know, but he went so far off the deep end that it turned into like hedonism almost or like mm -hmm. an obsession. And that's why we talk about having that balance, that wheel of life where everything is in balance. Health and wellness is important and, 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 and making the most of your physical body uh, so that you, you know, which is this, the, the temple of the spirit, right? That you, mm -hmm. you're going to carry you through this life. But every category has to be there. Of course, the spiritual has to. Something happened to Bill. And um, I'll edit that out on the replay because there will be a replay of this. And that's why I challenged Bill to one minute. That was an Italian minute. I'm going to give you my under 60 seconds version of why um, I think this course is important and why men should seriously uh, consider taking it. Is you know Jesus said, I, I've come to give you life and have it to the full. And that fullness is who we are in our body, mind, and spirit. And um, like Bill said, uh, I agree that we have an obligation, you know, to and a duty to make the mess, the, the best of what God has given us. And so, just as much as we have to have a spiritual plan of life, it is as important that we have a human formation plan for our lives. I remember what Sister Lucia wrote to. Um, um, a cardinal, Cardinal Kafara, who started an institute for marriage and the family under John Paul II. And she said, the final battle between God and Satan will be over marriage and the family. A lot of the battles that we face in our marriage and family, whether it deal with finances, work, spousal relationships, respect, trust, raising our kids. Yes, we are being attacked like crazy from the outside. But the devil doesn't control our minds. He doesn't control our minds. He doesn't control us unless we let him. He can try to influence us. And so what do we have to do? We've got to make sure that our relationships are right, the parts that we need to put into that. That's so crucial. And that's the, oh, most of that, just like that one exorcist said, is, about, is, is our human formation. So this masterclass really guides us through from the very beginning. Oh, it sounds like he's coming in here. Um, most of our human formation is going to be a big part of what we're doing. You know, in, in order to actually engage in that battle. So we do what we can spiritually. We do what we also have to do with our formation. So, you know, we got Bill joining us here, and I'm just wrapping up on my my uh, American Minute versus your Italian Minute. And I, I hope that we've been able to answer a lot of the, the key questions that you've had. One of the things I, I want to say is that if any of this has resonated with you, and anyway, any one of these things, I want to encourage you, reach out to me directly. You can do so just by going to the FultonSheen.Institute, and you'll see right there's a link that takes you to the Masterclass page. And there's a, you can, there's a link, and just schedule a call with me. I'd love to talk with you um, about you know, the kinds of things that you want to see increase in your life, things you want to see decrease in your life, things that are going to make a big difference. Um, maybe it's a massive adjustment of just what your overall goal or aim in life is, and you're you're in a moment of rediscovery as the whole world is being put through a reset. You know, we men are, are you know, we're, we're looking at these things and like, well, what does, you know, what am I created for, for this moment in history? Um, that's a big part of it. But the other part may be, I just want my marriages and my, you know, my marriage and my family solid. This is going to help that. So I encourage you and I invite you just to give me a call. We'll have a, you know, it's like a free discovery call. We'll look at what it is, um, that you want to, you know, kind of open the window, deep dive in just for a little bit and get into, you know, see an idea. Um, so just do that. You could, and there's also a link in the description for this webinar. Just go in there. You can click there. That'll take you to the the 
the website page for the masterclass, and you'll see a direct link to how to schedule a, a call with me. Um, I know for those who have to go, hey, this is thank you for you know staying on to this uh, to the end here. And um, I do want to look at the questions that we've had or some of the comments we've had in the um, in the chat here because I'd like to answer them. We've had Rick, who's just been uh, with us from beginning to end, um, from uh, Australia. Australia. I can't even do the accent. Australia. And it's good to see you, Rick. I'm curious to know where you are in that enor enormous country. Um, but uh, let's see here. Um, one of your questions, you had a lot of comments here that were, were great to see. Um, well, one of them that, that really hit me was you said, uh, can you do this on a diocesan level? Abs yeah, absolutely. Um, I, that's my goal, being so connected within the ministry and the life of the church. Um, I think that this is critical. I, I think it should be at a diocesan level for um, for administration of a diocese, a chancery, I, having worked for a bishop and in a chancery. Goodness gracious, can you imagine <laughs> seeing the transformation of a chancery? When you, you know, hopefully we can get rid of that saying, if you want to lose your faith, work for the church. Um, I mean, well, okay, there's a lot, there can be a lot of truth to that. Um, but just imagine the transformation of leadership and also, and also having something that we can pass on. I'd also uh, w would encourage the, um, the, the invitations really to, p to seminaries. John Paul II, in his letter for seminarians in the formation of priests, Dabo Vobis, he specifically called for this, um, this concentration that hasn't quite been there in this human formation. Those are the exact words. And so um, I would say, yes, contact me about that. It doesn't really matter where you are. As long as I don't have to get a vaccine to get there, I'll go there. That's, that's where I draw the line, to be honest, um, which is you know crazy in our world. But this should be really for this is the formation for strong leaders, no matter what it is. We all require aspects of this, maybe all of it, especially if you're starting from your dream. <laughs> if you're relooking at your life, then there's a lot that you're going to have to kind of retool and rewire to do that. If you're mm -hmm. in ministry, if you're like, I like to call him like a Catholic preneur, if you are an innovator, you feel called to do something, but you're scared to death about how you're going to do it because, you know, there's just a lot of fear that comes in. I know exactly what that's like, just starting an institute and having done things on the road with my family, starting from scratch. Um, you need faith and you need mindset and skills. You need all of them or you're not going to quite make it. Um, but they're, but Often, the mindset and the skill set and the human formation is what stops us. We hit the roadblocks, I can't do this, and God's not just going to hand it over on a silver platter. It's who you become throughout all of that that really makes the, the difference in the end. So that's a great question, Rick, and I'd love to talk to you about that. So if you want to reach out to me and specifically let me know what diocese you're in, um, that would help too, but you know. Zoom gets us linked across the world <laughs> in an instant. So yeah. just have to coordinate our, our time zones. So yeah, let's and I can see. tell you, Peter, we have, uh, just as an adjunct to that, we have some powerhouse women in Australia in the women's school. And I know because my, my wife is, uh, they're strategists and she's mentoring them. And uh, there's, there's, there's a movement happening in Australia, I'll tell you, in particular. So, yeah, definitely get connected with Peter. It's a great question. And... Um, yeah. See if we can get creative, and I, I'd love to. Well, Rick, I'd yeah, Rick, you may be. Yeah, Rick, you could be a catalyst for doing something like this. I mean, I, I always tell people too. You know, I, I've done a lot of speaking around the country and other places. Um, you know, knowledge is responsibility. So it's sort of a caveat emptor when you hear these these things because it's you know, have this knowledge is a responsibility, especially when you realize, oh my gosh, this is missing. I love this. This is speaking my language. I know what this is going to do to people. Even if it was like 30% of from where they are now, for most people, that's usually over a hump. Um, and so I say, look, just like Mother Teresa would say to people, the need is the call. Is this resonating with you personally? If there's things that you want to, you, know, you, you may say, I just want to go through this and really get tweaked myself and strengthened and become really the full man that God has created me to be, a fully integrated Catholic, which is, that's the, the summary of the whole thing, be a fully integrated Catholic, body, mind, and spirit. Um, you know, then that's great. But if you're saying, my goodness, look at these guys, 
You know, imagine imagine what these men could be. That's the part that gets me excited. You know, that's the part that gets me excited when I think about, gosh, how much God has to do with me. But I'm like, gosh, I don't know my full potential. But am I willing to take that risk of my ego and other things and submit it? Why? So that I'm the best man for my wife. I'm the best man for my six kids. I'm the best man for the Fulton Sheen Institute. And when people aren't just moved but and inspired by the truth, but they see it lived in me because that's what makes all the difference. The word became flesh. God didn't write a book. He didn't just assign another prophet. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And because now with Pentecost having come through just this last week, imagine a fully integrated man like on fire with the Holy Spirit. These are the men that are going to change the entire world in the way that God wants it. So that's maybe my final comments for this webinar. So Rick, get in touch with me. It's awesome. I, I, I can kind of feel your passion just looking at your comments. So Yeah, uh, Peter, one thing I could add to that too is if uh, I think I could, we could make one of the lessons available for people to watch if they want to get a little teaser or taste oh, sure. to get a sense of what they're getting into. We can make that available as well. And we could do that. Maybe we, you and I can talk offline, but you put, put something on your website where your listeners could uh, basically go on and watch a partial lesson, either a portion of a lesson or maybe we'll make one of the lessons available to, to view. Um, if that's something that would be of interest to, your, to you and your people, I'd be happy to do that. Sure. Yeah, that would be awesome. And, and Rick, where are you in Australia? You in the uh, Great Barrier Reef. I want to come visit you. Queensland, you know, where <laughs> <laughs> Northern Territory. In my old 80s days, that in 90s days, I was a, I don't know if you are, I was a huge Midnight Whale fan. So it's kind of hard not to think of Peter Garrett when you're talking about Australia. So to see his career go up and down in the sense of he entered into politics and all that, it was funny. So what does that say? We got Wollongong. I love the names. Is there like another one? Walla Walla? I think it's another one. I had a friend, but he was from Melbourne. He was my roommate in college for a year. Um, and so anyway, well, this is great. This is great. Um, Rick. Let's get in touch. The Diocese of, of Wollongong, 60 miles south. Oh, south of Sydney. So you're really close. Well, let's, <laughs> well, let's do that. Thanks, Rick, um, for joining us. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else, Bill, that we didn't cover. Um, Is there an email where people can reach you or you may have posted that? I can't see that where I'm right now. Oh, uh, here, yeah. You could also email me. Uh, you can First, you can schedule a, a call that's through, uh, through Zoom. It'll be a Zoom call. There's a Zoom. link right on the website. You can also email me directly. Just put um, Fulton Sheen Institute at gmail.com. Um, and that'll be another good way to, to get us connected. And, uh, of course, there's the website itself, FultonSheen.Institute. There is a, a good introduction video with Bill that he did before they launched their very first class back in November that really caught me. Uh, and, and drew my attention to this. I think you'll find that uh, very helpful. Um, and then, yeah, I'll talk with Bill, and we can look about having a, a sample lesson up, and you know, we can make this work. This has been great. Thank you, Bill, for helping me uh, to answer these questions that have come in. You know, these are common oh, questions pleasure. that people have, and I know that we certainly gave um, you know uh, more than ample <laughs> uh, meat for them to, to chew on. But I. I think that this is um, going to be a great blessing uh, to to the church and its new evangelization. Yeah, we, we've, I, one of the things I'm most encouraged encourage about is the, you know, just the, the letters that I get back, the emails I get from people that have been through the course and the, the transformations that are taking place in their life as a result of these lessons and applying these lessons. And that's what I live for, that kind of feedback, because that, that really excites me the most. Mm -hmm. And we're all about helping people become the very best version of themselves to transform their lives, to live the life of their dreams, the life they're called to live, and to give them the mindsets and the skill sets and the tools to make that happen. So, and the unique thing with the Fulton Sheen Institute is you're also going to get a, a really integrated sense of the, uh, of the most important spiritual aspects of Catholicism and how they tie together with that best of breed human formation. So it's a unique opportunity, and I encourage you guys to definitely take advantage of it and reach out to Peter and... Um, and Peter, if you ever need me to be a part of that too, I'm, I'm happy to, to come back anytime and just really excited for 
all the things that you're going to be able to share and do with your uh, with your with your people here. So, thank you so much for having me on. It's been great being here. Well, thank you, Bill. And just as I said earlier, there will be a replay of this. So that will be on the Fulton Sheen uh, Institute website. So FultonSheen.Institute, look for the replay. Um, and uh, obviously I'll edit out you know, certain things that might not need to be there just so that we just keep it right onto the meat of things. Um, and I encourage you, invite your friends, l let them know about this. This is how this spreads. If this really got you on fire and you're like, oh my goodness, we finally have something like this, let your friends know. Because especially if, you, if you're interested in going through this, which I hope you are, you could start working on a group of men right now who can go through it with you. Just imagine what your fraternity and your, and your community will be like when you know you've got four or five other guys going through this formation with you, what God can do. Look what he did with 12. Look what he did with one on Pentecost. And the day before that, he was petrified. And then the next day, 3,000 people. So that's the that's the awesome part of that. Let God multiply it, but let us get out and, and do the, the groundwork for him. So thanks again, Bill. It's great to have you next door in Montana. And uh, yes, we, we look forward to the future. So thanks, Rick, and everybody who's joined us. God bless you all. Thank you, Peter.